Hi, everybody, and welcome to season two, episode five of The Leo's Den. My name is Naya, and my fun fact today is that I had worked at Buffalo Wild Wings four out of the six years I've been on the professional USA women's rugby team. Hi, guys. My name is Ilona Mar. People call me Lo. Uh, And my fun fact is at the beginning of this year, I made the goal to spend money on things that I want and not just saying, oh, no, I I don't need it. Just like if I want it and it's going to spark joy, buy it. Um, So we're recording this actually on November 21st. We're at 24th. Sorry, four ones get me. My lift comes out, I guess. Uh, We're at a tournament in Dubai right now. Um, It's like 8 p.m. here, but it's 8 a.m back where we're at home so we're jet lagged uh immensely um so let's you know how we do we start off with a horoscope so for us leos do you often act as if the world is static and nothing ever changes sometimes you may think that humankind is a certain way the world is a certain way and so this is what you're going to do have you ever heard of evolution the human race is constantly evolving and so is the world look around deep (laughs) yeah when i heard that i thought about like how stubborn I am with being comfortable with things staying exactly the way they are every day and like having to fight myself with that mentality each day when it's completely the opposite of what I want Mm -hmm. like I'm a really a freak of habit and so it's hard living in this world that's a good point I like that like just uh, sometimes you get a little comfortable and then like things don't happen you're like what's happening um, mm-hmm. especially with our job, with our sport, like things can change constantly with whatever. So good point. Yeah. I'll definitely, definitely say one of the main things I took and take consistently away from rugby is patience. And that's something I'm still working on. So life has a funny way of teaching you that. But today for this episode, we are talking about finances as a rugby player. Um, Kind of how I want to start this off is one of the questions that I get, Lo, let me know if you get this question a lot, but are we rich? I, dude, I just got that question from fourth graders when I was in fourth graders. They were like, are you rich? And I was like, no, no, no. I am a female athlete in rugby. And then one kid was like, what car do you drive? I was like, a Honda Civic. And fun fact, both I and I drive Honda Civics, old Honda yeah. Civic, okay? Not new ones. 2008. 2008, yep. Yeah. And it's funny you say that, that you get that from younger children because I also get that from like people my age adults who are like very curious and don't know like do like how much money are we really making um and I guess kind of the easy way to talk about that is to just kind of go into you know what it is like for us in terms of payment and how much we receive we receive as rugby players um we are not rich. <laughs> oh, we are not uh, rich. Nowhere we're not close. Like NBA stars or NFL players, not yet, at least. <laughs> yeah, I think we're a long, long way away from there in, in terms of just those guys are like millionaires. I don't think that, I, I, I don't know, are there millionaire rugby players? I know not in the U.S. probably, but there internationally? Are some, like for sure, New Zealand and whatnot, but they, it's not, but still their contracts aren't like, soccer players, NFL players that are like $400 million. They're like 2 million. Um, Mm. Nothing crazy like that. But I think one thing that's key for me is that I think we're, we're not never going to be rich, like in, in, in rugby, like that's us, but we're doing this so that hopefully one day girls can make a really great wage off of rugby um, mm-hmm. because like right now we're kind of like, you know, we're living a better than what it once was. Right. Cause they once were not paid all, barely had any access. So we're definitely living a better life, but we're trying to make it even better for that next generation that comes in. So hopefully they can get sometime at one point that hundred thousand, 200,000 million dollar contract. Yeah. And I think rich is different for everybody. Like rich for some people is $50,000 rich for other people is six figures. And we'll say like, we're making less than $50,000. We're getting paid to where like, it is common for you to have a side job because you do need some extra form of cash coming in. And I want to say like, I think you could be rich off of rugby, but it won't be from your salary. It'll be from what you're doing outside of it. 
um, in terms of endorsements and sponsorships like that. And that's really tough to come around in rugby, which makes it really difficult to, you know, make a lot of money. Yeah, I think that's key. And I was just thinking about it now, like, you know, both of us, I think maybe we make more of our income off of like little deal deals here and there. So it's almost like we have two, like you don't work at Buffalo Wild Wings anymore, but it's almost like we still have mm-hmm. two jobs. Like I do the yeah. rugby side and then I do the other TikTok influencer side. That's like a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And also um, how our payment is, is that we receive a salary payment for playing and we also receive money for getting selected to tournaments and then we also receive money based on how well we do in those tournaments so there is opportunities to make a lot of money Um, a lot of it just depends on performance which makes sense and kind of is a situation for not only sports but business and other areas of work as well yeah and I think what's key about that is when COVID hit like we used to have this other kind of source of income by going to tournaments and making tournaments. And then when COVID hit for a year and a half, more than that, we didn't have that extra source of income coming in. And that was like definitely tough to only have the small monthly stipend that we get, which again is bigger than a lot of athletes get. And so very blessed that we do get to get it. But it was just such a change up from, you know, us and I and I who usually make tournaments and usually have a little bit more pocket money from these tournaments that was all taken away from with COVID as a lot of people were affected. Yeah. And I think uh, another one of the things that was really hard to adjust to is making the salary we make, but living on the West coast in California versus living on the East coast, where from my experience, it was a lot cheaper. Yeah. I think um, we live in one of the best cities in the world, I would say San Mm -hmm. Diego but it is not a cheap place. It's pretty much, I would say the same as like New York city, like New York city is wildly expensive as well. And I mean, I, so I live in a two bedroom apartment, tiny, tiny apartment, like no laundry, no AC or whatever. And I pay like eight fifty, I think for it. And it has like none of the amenities, but for me, that's what I want to pay right now. But if I wanted something nicer, I would be up to like a hundred, 1100. Um, or I'd be up to 1000, 1200, like, that would be the range for something that is actually like has the amenities that I want. Mm -hmm. Like from having conversations with my sisters who own houses and rent apartments and things of that such, they're like, Oh yeah, my rent's under 1200. And I'm like, I'm paying $1,200 for like a, a little guest house. And if I ever wanted to go into a one bedroom apartment, in a nice area, I'm paying at least 2300 which is insane. Yeah, I, I just, I look at all these places and like everything that I want, I'm like, well, this is like, do a, can I live with myself if I'm paying 1300 bucks for a place when I'm not always there because we travel yeah. so much now? It's mm-hmm. like, can I register that in my head? Do I want to do that? Uh, but mm-hmm. then like, there are times that I'm like, I, I do need a place that I feel comfortable with. And so it is worth spending that money. Yeah. So kind of prioritizing where to put the money that we do make because gas is expensive. Food is more expensive. Drinks is more expensive activities. Like it's, it's a whole lifestyle change. It's, it's insane. Gas is like, um, five, almost $5 in California. And so you live close to the center. So you live what, how, how far is your drive? Like 10, 15 minutes. 10 minutes. And I drive, I live about a half an hour from the center. Every morning I drive in and I'm like, why the heck do I do this to myself? It's <laughs> so long. And it's like, I'm the amount of gas I use, but like, that's where I think like I, Naya has a great little place for, um, you know, 1200 bucks. She has a whole little house. Whereas I am more in the city in San Diego and I pay 850 for a tiny place. So mm-hmm. It's just different. But yeah. now when you worked at Buffalo Wild Wings, did you do it because you had to, you needed that double income or did you do it because you wanted that extra spending cash? In order to feel like I could be independent when I first came in where I was making the lowest amount you could make, which was very, very, very low. I will say that I'm not going to give you guys a number, but it was low as hell. And so like, 
to live independently without having to call my mother or my father and say, Hey, can you throw me cash for this to live comfortably? Like you said, um, I had to get a second job. Um, I didn't want to have to really depend on anybody financially because I never had really, even in college, like I didn't have to worry about school debt. I had a work study job. So I just wanted to continue that mentality. So I thought it was important for me to get a second job. And I also was thinking long term in terms of like, okay, you know, I'm out of college. Like I need to start having a savings account. I need to be able to have a credit card to where I comfortably have it and I don't have debt. So could I have survived without a second job? Yes. Would I have enjoyed it? Absolutely not. What I, about you? Have you? I'll go yeah, ahead. I think you, I, you and I are very similar in that, like, I just would never think to ask my parents for money. Um, and I mean, they would definitely give it to me, but I just, that thought to me is just not something I ever want to do. And even if it means getting a second job, I wouldn't want to do it. I think for me, it wasn't getting a second job. It was kind of making more sacrifices and like, uh, living situation, how comfortable I wanted to be. So for a while there, I was living with a woman who like, I only paid like $600 in rent, like very cheap. Um, and that was kind of like my sacrifice. Like I wasn't really ever fully comfortable there, but that's what I did to supplement what I was making. Um, I didn't really ever get a second job, um, just because it was like, it's, it was, it's a lot of work and I can't imagine how you did it. Like trying to fit in hours and like when you're traveling all the time, like, Hey, I can work this day, but I can't work this day and I'll be gone for two weeks. Um, I think for me, my second job was, um, Oh, you take classes. And like, so mm-hmm. I took take classes cause that's like, I get the classes for free. So it's almost like the money that I could be spending on the classes is I'm kind of keeping for myself in a way. Um, so that was, became my second job in a way. And that's crazy you say that because when I had first came, like those first six months, I was training full time. I was working at Buffalo Wild Wings and I was finishing my last semester online. How I did that, I have no clue. I think just the young age, the naiveness in it, like I just didn't like looking back on it now. I'm like, how did I do that? Because after training, like I was sprinting home to shower and get changed and go to work to be there for eight hours, getting home at 12 o'clock, not understanding meal prep yet. So bringing food home from Buffalo Wild Wings, (laughs) just like eating chicken wings at 12 in the morning, knowing that I had to get up at six o'clock and like go push my body to limits, crazy limits. So like eventually I got to a point um, after three or four years where it was like, my back started hurting from being on my feet so much. And like, yeah, the money was amazing in terms of tips. Like that's one thing we'll say about living on the West coast is as a server, you make way more than you do on the East coast. On the East coast, I think I was making $2 an hour on the West coast. I'm making $11 at least an hour on with tips on top of that. Like it was really hard for me to leave Buffalo Wild Wings, even though I probably could have left earlier because the money was so good. Um, But yeah, I feel like you can survive without a second job, but it is something that is very common with the amount of money that we do make, depending on what level of contract you receive when you are brought onto the team. So that's something that I don't think a lot of um, girls wanting to come be in our positions think about is what that money situation will be like and what things you'll have to sacrifice in order to be here. Cause it's not like the NFL or the NBA where once you make it, boy, you made it like you still got to work hard and stuff, but the reward is financially a lot bigger than um, it is for us. So I feel like it takes a lot for us to put our bodies on the line for the financial reward that we get that I don't think is enough. And I don't think is what we deserve, but hopefully we'll, like you said, get to where it needs to be because we're putting in the work now. We're for sure changing the landscape, I think now. And I think it's really just, it's a, it's a labor of love in a way. And it's, um, we, we love what we do and we want to keep doing it. So like, I think, I don't know, I can't speak for you, but I personally would be doing it even if I got paid less. Mm-hmm. I, I would we'll start working as a nurse at that time, but just because I love it so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's so awesome. And also I think since we get to travel the world, it's like that money that we would, I, I feel like the money we would pay for like trips to South Africa and trips to Sydney are like, I don't have to pay that as being just a normal person. It's something I get to do for free. Um, yeah. So that's yeah, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And we've kind of said a lot about how, yeah, we, we make money, but it isn't the greatest amount of money, but there are a lot of pros to um, being on the team financially in terms of receiving free food at the training center that we work at. Um, some girls come in and on their contract, they get free housing, which I think is amazing. Um, what else? Uh, we get snack reimbursements when we go to travel. We get free travel. We don't have to worry about that. So that's amazing. Uh, anything else we can think of? I mean, we get gear except for cleats. Oh, uh, yeah. But we get all sorts of <laughs> gear and kit and whatnot. When we travel, we don't have to pay for anything. So things like add up in a way for sure. Um, mm-hmm. But on a new topic, like, so we're, we're self what are we called? Independent contractors. Self-employed. Independent yeah. contractors of USA Rugby. So what that means is that every month we get a stipend, but like, you know, usually you'd get your paycheck and the the government would already take money out of that paycheck. But for us, the government doesn't take the money out. So at the end of the year, Nye and I are like paying, you know, paying the big man some big bucks at the end there. Yeah, for, for the taxes. Mm-hmm. They take the, the taxes out. Um when you're regularly employed, but when you're self-employed like we are, um, we have to pay those taxes every January, February. So that's, so like <laughs> for me, it's so funny because I have my savings account. I'm like, oh my God, like I got so much money in here. And then January, February will, will come around. I'm like, okay, I have no savings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no savings. <laughs> what happened here? Yeah. And, um, I th- one thing we can do is we can write things off. Some of our teammates write a lot of things off. Um, I, I don't know about <laughs> you. <laughs> you probably write a lot of things. I was like, dad, my teammates write this off. He's like, you're not writing that off. I'm like, what? But so write-offs <laughs> are like things that helped you to do your job as an independent contractor. So you can write off cleats even. You can write, out, write off workout gear. You could write off the gases, gas miles you have to take to get to the center. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of like you, I'm a little hesitant about that stuff too. Like seeing some of the girls, <laughs> we're putting them out. Oh, pretend you didn't hear this, <laughs> but um, how do you, how do you do your taxes? Who does your taxes? Do you have well, somebody? I, I do with like a, my known tax guy that I go to, but every mm-hmm. year it seems like he's still is confused about what, what sort of like employee I am of USA rugby. And he's like, so what is, what do you do? All right. So what is this? And I'm like, man, I don't know. You're the tax guy. You tell me. Um, And so it's always a different thing because it is a very weird system being an independent contractor and whatnot. And like, because we get money from the U S Olympic committee, right? They're the ones who pay us U S Olympic committee, but then USA rugby is the ones who pay us the bonuses. So, and then for me this year, my taxes are going to be wild Naya because I'm getting all this money from like, probably 20 different sources plus. Yeah. So mm-hmm. figuring all that out and like writing off everyone, I just, I'm very scared for taxes. Cause he's going to call me up and be like, what is this? And I'm going to be like, you know what, sir, I have no idea. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things that um, USA rugby can look to improve on is teaching us how to do those taxes. Cause like when I came in, there was really no help with that. Like, first of all, I didn't know that I would have to do taxes. Second of all, I didn't know how to do those taxes. And third of all, I didn't know who to go to to help me with that. Because as you said, even people who do taxes still have a tough time with um, independent contractors. So for me, um, talking around the team, I ended up hooking up with a lady who was a rugby player as well and very smart and kind of helped me with my taxes for a while. But last year she wasn't doing it anymore. And I'm like, Oh my God, what am I going to do? And I tried to do it on turbo tax. It was an absolute fail. So I ended up like paying extra money to have a tax pro on, tur- on turbo tax do it. And like, she was similar to your dad of like, Oh yeah, you can't do that. You can't do this. I'm like, Oh man, I'm really going to be paying a lot this year. Yeah. So Mm. For sure. And now do you invest like one thing for me and I suggest this to anybody is start an IRA, a retirement account, like as soon as you can mm-hmm. and just start putting money into it. I think it's so smart for us. My dad was like, can you put $400 into your retirement account each month? And I was like, what? For mm-hmm. 400 
no, sir, I cannot right now. <laughs> but because you're supposed to put like a certain percentage of like what you make each month. And so he's like, can you do that? I'm like, no, I will not be doing that. <laughs> but I just think it's so key to start building for your future now. And I, that's what I'm so thankful about is that my dad is so on top of that. And he's like, this is what he's like, you're starting this retirement account. Now you're putting $6,000 in this year. You're putting this in, blah, blah, blah. So that's very helpful to have somebody who's so knowledgeable, like my dad telling me what to do. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really have that growing up. I didn't have, th- have that um, since I've been living in California in terms of having somebody to go to and say, hey, or somebody coming to me saying, this is what you should do with your money. Um, one of my teammates had a, a guy that she worked with and she was like, hey, if any of you guys want to use them, like hit him up. And for me, like if I don't know something, I'm going to pick somebody who knows it all. So I don't even have to like look up that type of information. So I reached out to this guy and he helped me with um, getting life insurance. He helped me with getting an IRA IRA to where you were saying like $400, where for me, like I'm putting $500 in mine each month, which when they told me that I was like, really? But then I thought about it and I'm like, I spend five, like I could spend $500 in a day easy. So it's like, if I can do that, then I can invest this money into this account and just say, take it like, so I can never, ever had seen it was even there. And like every now and then I go and look at it and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm glad I'm doing that. Yeah, you got me ready to go change my mind. I think I'm going to have to change that too. Yeah, you got to. 50500, scary. Um, But one thing I am, I am a massive saver. I don't know what my Oma taught me early on, but I will save. And that's why, as I said, my fun fact is like this year, I was like, low, spend money on things that are going to make you happy. Um, And Mm -hmm. it's been actually really freeing. um, And like, I haven't found any difference in what I make or anything like that. Like, it's not like all of a sudden, no, I don't have any money. It's like been the same. Uh, but my, my savings account is very important for me to know I have security. Like that's what Mm -hmm. I think is so key because finances can be so stressful. What would you say is an, a minimum amount for an emergency account? I don't really know, but like, I might go ballpark, like high and say like 20,000 or something like that. 20. Yeah. I would think like five for an emergency. Like what happened? Did your house burn down? You got to buy a new house. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's like, it's, I guess that's why I am my saver. And I, I need to invest yeah. more and like put more like stuff away. I, I mm-hmm. wish I understood it a little bit more, but I always would rather just have so like such a security blanket mm-hmm. um, personally. But I know I have friends who are like, I, I don't understand the friends who literally live paycheck to paycheck. I'm like, how are you doing this? How do you <laughs> sleep at night? <laughs> yeah, I think for my savings account, like I love seeing it rise and I do put money in it anytime I get a surplus of money or um, just generally each month. But I'm also like not never sh- a person who shy away from like, oh, I really want to get that. And I already spent my money for the month. So I'm just going to go in my savings account and just grab a little and I'll make sure I put back extra. I think that's the important part is like, the savings account is for emergencies, but for me, like also if I just want to use it for something, as long as I have the understanding that the money needs to put back, be put back in double fold, then I'm okay doing so. And you were also talking about investments in terms of IRA, but do you have any investments in like just regular stock stocks that you watch on your own? I don't watch stocks on my own. I have a guy who does investing for me. Um, Mm -hmm. because I, I would, I want to know about it and I want to understand it, but I have, I don't get it at all. I don't know what the frick stocks are and what the (laughs) frick any of that is. Uh, and I Mm -hmm. want to, cause like, I want to invest more and I want to like see money multiply, but I just, I've never had a financial mindset. Um, and mm-hmm. so it has been cool to take like finance classes and whatnot to learn a little bit more, but, uh, no, I don't, I don't check stocks. Do you, do you do like Robin hood or what do you do? 
<laughs> um, I used to do Robin Hood, and then I do, and then I went over to Coinbase because that's kind of where the crypto is, and that's what was blowing up um, during the COVID um, era. I guess we're still kind of in that, but I was kind of hesitant to do it too because I'm not really a gambler. I don't like risking the risking losing money that like that just doesn't sound good to me but um somebody suggested like hey like just put fifty dollars in there and see what happens and when I started seeing the profit it was like oh okay bet so like now I have bitcoin I have ethereum um and it's kind of like play money so like yeah I have same as you like a guy who takes the $500 and invests it each month and what he thinks it should go into. And I can't touch that money, but then I had this, Oh, extra money that I wanted to, instead of putting it into my savings account, just play with the stocks and see what could happen. Because I did see a lot of people, a lot of um, my friends making some good money off of um, crypto and Robin hood and things of that such. So I definitely am investing, investing in that now and kind of learning as I go. And um I'm not really interested in learning about the information either, but a lot of the people around me are. So I kind of just pick their brain and, and I'm like, who, what should I put it in? Kind of trusting them in that aspect, but also making a good profit of it off of it. So I would recommend like, if you ever had like a hundred dollars or, you know, a thousand dollars came in, like play around with that and see how much money you can actually make off of it. Money that you're not afraid to lose is basically what somebody told me, like put in money that you're not afraid to lose. That's a good point. And I, I really know I should try that because like I sometimes mm-hmm. will get deals for like, Hey, just do this for 2000 bucks. And I think that would be super key to like, okay, that money is money I wasn't prepared for. So why not try something else with it? Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, I'll definitely try it. Yeah. So with the talk on money, do you have a budget for yourself? And if so, did you create it or did, did somebody create it for you? I don't have a budget for myself. I, uh, I literally just spend what I want to. Uh, but again, I'm such a saver and it's such a saver mindset that mm-hmm. I'm not worried about it because I'm literally just like so cautious with what I spend. Um, I think budgeting, I, one thing I don't budget, I don't budget. Like I eat out a lot because eating out a lot, eating out gives me so much freaking joy that I just <laughs> eat out all the time because especially in the pandemic when it was like very hard to find sparks of joy, that was what gave it to me. And it's just something so nice. Like all I do is usually eat at the the center, right? I just eat center food. Mm-hmm. And so feeling like it's okay to go get ramen or okay to go eat out. Um, that is something that I think is really important to me. Um, mm-hmm. But what about you? Do you budget? Are you like only $200 for this? Blah, blah, blah. So I actually like created a budget in the Google Excel and like, I never follow it. So like, (laughs) I guess it just kind of makes me feel good. Like, okay, yeah, you got a budget. But in reality, like, I don't follow it as much as I would like to. Um, I think I would like to be more strict to it because I do feel like sometimes I get into that mentality a little too often of get if, if you want to get it when like, you know, It's nice sometimes, but to always do it, eventually it'll catch up to you. So I think on some of the times where it's like, oh, it's catching up to me, not in an extreme way, but in small um, manners, it's like, oh, let me go look at my budget and make sure. And it's like, that's silly. Like the budget isn't even a real thing, but it's something that I would definitely recommend. I use it to keep track of my bills and what money's coming in. So it is kind of just a reflection each month to look at and make sure, you know, you're not being too outrageous. For sure. I'll think about it, but I probably won't ever do it. Uh, (laughs) Not now, at least. Um, Now, I think as athletes, a lot of people think of us as sponsored, like, oh, are you sponsored by blah, 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 and blah, blah. So like, Naya, do you have sponsorships or do you kind of like, for me, I don't have sponsorships. I just kind of like want, have one-off deals. Mm -hmm. Majority of my Um, income outside of rugby is usually one-off deals. I do have one clothing company that I work with called PSK. PSK, That's, I would say is a sponsorship um, where I receive payment for, you know, promoting their brand. So I would say that's probably the one sponsorship I do have, but I'm speaking it into existence right now that we're going to get 
three sponsorships each this upcoming year. Wow, three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, that'd be dope. Um, I think same as you. I uh, have one off deal. So, like, to me, a sponsorship would be like, hey, for a year or whatnot. You're mm-hmm. our face of our brand, one of the face of our brand. We're going to pay you a good amount. Whereas I have yeah. like, hey, can you do these TikToks for us, this Instagram, and I'll give you this amount of money. So that's mm-hmm. what I do work with right now. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to like, you know, I would love to use a brand that I really like. Um, like even as Athleta, um, Abby would kill me, but like Lululemon, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I think the consistency in that is something that a, a lot of us crave and also the appreciation with being the face of a organization or a company like that's a big thing. So I think that's something that I hope will flourish hugely for the both of us. For sure. Let's all uh, send up a little little prayer. Oh, give us sponsorships. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's get into some cup questions, shall we? We shall. Okay, so the first question on the list is, do you have health insurance? And also, how accessible is the sport for those with health needs? Uh, yeah, I have health insurance. Um, <laughs> you're going to want to have health insurance <laughs> with the job yeah. we do. Uh, I still am on my parents' insurance, but I am 25. So next year I'll be off it, which is oof, going to be bad. But our job does offer us health insurance. So mm-hmm. that will be a, a, a good transition in that once I'm off my parents, I will still have a health insurance option. But but right now, I'm, I'm, when I go home to Christmas, I'm going to hit up everybody, the dentist, gyno, everybody, get my, get my. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's another one of the pros that we didn't think about is that we do get free health insurance because that's another thing that's very in- expensive in California um, that I just recently learned. Um, so I am 27. So I have transitioned to being under the USA Rugby Health Insurance, and it's very convenient. Um we don't really ever have to, we don't have to pay for anything. And if we do, it's, you know, $20 or less. It's very nice. Um, I'm not trying to think about how much it's going to cost once we leave this rugby world, but um, it is very beneficial. And in terms of accessibility for people with health needs, um, I would say like outside of injuries, I don't really know. I want to say, yeah, because you have wheelchair rugby. Yeah. And I think one thing with that is like, um, we have a mental health program. So if you need to, um, if you feel the need to like see a therapist or whatnot, there are avenues and it's called the care program and they will give you money to go, um, get your needs taken care of. Um, accessible is for, for those with health needs. I mean, it is a very tough sport. So, Mm -hmm. We can't speak on it, I think, because, you know, we play with very elite athletes. But, yeah, as I said, there's wheelchair rugby. Um, some some members of our team have asthma and other problems that they work through. So I guess that's be there. Yeah. Okay, the next question. So what are um, – sorry, you want to say it? <laughs> Go ahead. All right, sorry. What are fan finances like in the off season? Hit it, Naya. They are the same. Like we still get paid our flat rate salary throughout the off season. The only difference would be that we aren't receiving selection bonuses or bonuses for how we place because we obviously aren't playing during the off season. But outside of that, I'm sure there's more more time for social media for us to be able to make money off of that. Yeah, but I would agree with the same because we are contracted through like before the Olympics, we were contracted for two years. So for two years, we were guaranteed to get payments each month, which was super nice because in COVID, we got guaranteed payments, even though we weren't playing. Um, Mm -hmm. So thank you to those. Um, And then um, next question, does the league help with exit planning for players? 
I would say some that's something that they definitely improved on, but um, is an area where there could be some work. There are programs put in place to help us make extra cash, whether it's interning or um, getting extra cash to do um, classes that you think will be important for your future career or um, any other um, areas of work that you are interested in that they can help you with so that when you do leave the league, you're not feeling like you have no clue what to do. So I think I would say yes. I would definitely definitely say yes to that. But I think um, there's a lot of work to be done in that area. And I think it's also very hard because, like, you come from, hey, I just spent six years playing rugby. Woo! Put me in your business environment. Put me in your hospital. So, I mean, that's why a lot of our girls take classes. A lot of them, you know, um, Nicole's going for a yoga license to be a yoga teacher. Um, so there's all sorts of ways that they're trying to set themselves up to be set in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next question. Is there equal money put into the women, the women's team as well as there is in the men? You know, I'm not fully sure about that. I think they're doing a much better job of it. Um, I think after this Olympics, it's undeniable that our our women's team um, is um, deserves notoriety and deserves people's attention. And, um, if not like we had more attention than I would say the men's did in the Olympics. And I think there is equal money for each teams, but it might be different in other areas. But for now we, it is equal what we get paid a monthly stipend. Yeah. One of the last questions. Oh, go ahead. (laughs) <laughs> excuse Nia and I we're very jet lagged and tired guys <laughs> we're sitting here like oh my god is it almost dead I've Sorry, been up guys. since 2 30 a.m Naya. I am I'm lagging 2 30 what time did you go to sleep yesterday I went to sleep at nine but I, I, I got up at 2 30 and I couldn't go back to bed so I'm so oh, I'm no. grouchy I'm like we gotta get <laughs> 6 a.m again I'm so pissed <laughs> I seen her roll her eyes. I'm like, oh, Lord, let me hurry up. Is she get angry? <laughs> <laughs> we are tired. <laughs> My um, all right. right now and I know we, I'm loud. We kind of answered this question, but do you pay for travel expenses? No, we do not. Yeah. There's and one I, more question on here. Oh, keep going. It says, does rugby cover your expenses or is it common to have a side hustle? Oh, I guess we touched on that as well. Yeah. Some we of can, us have side hustles, but um, yeah. Some of us don't. Some of us don't. Some of us like living, uh, living low, you know, <laughs> down and dirty. <laughs> okay, guys, that's a wrap for this episode. We wanted to say thank you so much for tuning in, and we apologize in advance for <laughs> the, a little bit of roughness in this podcast. But we hope you enjoyed it and that you learned a lot from it. Um, we want you guys to make sure you subscribe to the Leo's Den on your podcast app and follow at With Sports on all social media platforms for more great podcasts on women's sports. Show notes on our, are on our webpage at withsports.com at the listening tab at Leo's Den. The challenge for today is to create a budget for yourself and try to follow it for two weeks. If it works, great. Give us our credit. And if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. And then I would say a second challenge is if you want something, buy it. Okay. If you want to go get a bowl of ramen, get the bowl of ramen. If you want the shoes, buy the shoes. Okay. So there's two different challenges that it kind of don't work together, but pick one and do it. Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to turn your alerts on every Friday for our episode releases and follow at Leo's Den underscore with sports on Instagram. Whether you came for the rugby and stayed with the shenanigans, we hope you join us next time in the Leo's Den. Bye. Bedtime. (laughs) Peace out. Good night.